What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here, and in this video series I'm going to be doing a tutorial from scratch to finish showing you how to build this application that I've deployed on the Android App Store. Uh, we're going to be using React Native, and we're going to be using Redux with this application as well. So please stick around if you want to learn how to do this. Another thing I want to mention is if you're keen to see more content like this, please let me know in the comments below by just shouting more or something. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And leave a like, because that always helps me out too. Now, before we get started, I need to explain what this application actually does. So I built this application for guitarists. Uh, I can change buttons and stuff there. So I changed it to G, and let's say I go to Kappa 4. That tells me that if I'm playing the chords in G, uh, if you're a musician, you understand this. If not, then don't stress too much. You'll still learn a lot in this application building process. If I play the key in G and I put on capo 4, then the key that you should be playing if you aren't having a capo should be B. So that's just a simple little tool to work things out. It's more for like beginner musicians who don't really understand their music theory. Let me actually give you an example. I have a guitar in my hand, so let's show you. If I'm playing some notes, so that's in G. Now I have this little capo device and I put it on capo 4 and it'll sound like this, the same chords. So yeah, pretty straightforward. The wonderful thing about this app is if you are playing with another guitarist who doesn't have a capo, they'll know what they should be playing, which is kind of great because you always have this issue of one guy has a capo and everyone's really confused what they're doing. This application is just to help you solve those issues out. It works pretty basically. Look, here's an example. We're on G and you just, if you have capo four, it's one, two, three, four over to B. And if you know your music theory, it goes from A all the way around to G. And uh, the gap between B and C, there's no semitone, and there's no semitone gap between E and F. They just go straight into each other. But enough of that. You'll just know that if you're a software developer, you're probably going to have to figure out the sort of business rules of an application and how it should run. So that's the cool thing about being a software developer. You get to learn new things all the time. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get on to starting our project. Right, so here I am in Expo, uh, Expo XDE, and if you're not familiar with this, I'm leaving a little card up here to show you where to go to get Expo all set up. Uh, I explain a lot about what Expo is and how cool it is. The great thing about this is you'll be able to make cross-platform applications. So I'm using an Android device because I'm familiar with an Android device and I have one and I don't have an iPhone. But you can also make iPhone applications using this and the process is exactly the same. I could actually deploy this application that I created as an iPhone application and put it in the App Store just like that. I highly recommend you go check out that playlist of setting Expo up and everything before you get started with this because it covers a lot of basics. Anyway, what you want to do when you have done that is go to New Project and in my case, I am going to call this, I'm calling it Capo Keys because that's what I called my application. You can call it whatever you want, but we're going to make this Capo Keys application that I made. And I want to make sure I put it in a specific directory. So I'm going to put it in documents and I made a folder called YouTube. So I'm just going to put it in the YouTube folder under my documents. And there we go. We just click create a blank page. And then this tends to take a while. So be sure to grab some tea or hot chocolate or whatever, because it does take quite a while. Anyway, I'll catch you when it's done. Ah, while recording, I actually just forgot another neat little feature of this application. So let's go back to that G4 sort of situation I was at. Uh, I implemented a little button that opens a modal, which is this little view transposed chords button. So if I hit that, it gives you a full modal showing you all the chord transitions that should happen. And this is all just coded by me, so I'm going to show you how to do this as well. So example, when I was playing those chords, I was playing E, C, and G. So if someone else was to play those chords, they should go play uh, either G-sharp or A-flat, and then E and B. So those are the chords they should be playing. So that's just another little feature of this application that I forgot to advertise while entering this video. Anyway, I'll be back when this is done loading. All right, guys, so that is finally finished. And here we have our application here. It just says open up app.js to start working on your app. It's your typical starter screen when you get this going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into Visual Studio Code. Here we are. And I'm going to go open my folder where it was. Oh, I'm far away. So I was in Documents, YouTube, and Kappa Keys. That's where I've saved it. And here we can see our basically our application. We have our app.js, which if I go bring up my screen again, 
here I have this open up app.js to start working on your app. And there it is, the text over there. So that's how this all works. Um, if you've checked out my YouTube series, the literally building a simple YouTube search app, I'll leave a card up over here. Go check that out. That sort of goes over a lot of this content in a bit more detail because a lot of these things I'm going to skip over. Now, the first thing it's freaking out is I can't find ESLint config rally coding. It's because I haven't set up ESLint yet which we should do now because that's one of the first things of setting up our program. So I'm here in my console and I'm going to type in CD documents, console documents, slash YouTube slash capo keys. And if you remember from the setup tutorial, we've got to say npm install dash dash save dash dev, uh, eslint config rally coding. There's also another one called uh, Universal. I mentioned that in one of the things. You could also use Universal, but I really like the rally coding one, so we're going to go with that. So remember to do that dash dash save dash dev because we want it to be a dev package, not your normal one that gets released, because we're going to be using it in development. So remember, if you've looked at all my other projects, what this does is it provides you with some syntax highlighting, mentioning like where you're messing up and stuff. But before that's going to work, I'm going to let it go in here and I'm going to move this off to the side so I know when it's done. And we need to add a root folder here, which is going to be a new file and we're going to call it .eslintrc. And here we need to say, make this function here and we say, or well, object, extends, and we say eslint config-rally coding. There we go. And it's still not going to work until we finish installing this, which is still taking its time. But I wanted to mention some other stuff in this project. So before we end off this video, which I'm going to do pretty soon, I want to mention that this is going to be quite a learning curve because we're going to be implementing something called Redux. And a lot of it. People explain it a lot in their own tutorial videos. I'm not going to explain it too much. I'm just going to show it in action and hopefully you can learn through doing because that's a really great way to learn. Just remember at the end of this, you'll be able to make this project work for Android phones and iOS phones. And again, this doesn't matter what operating system you're on. So I highly recommend you follow through this tutorial with me. And before I go on, uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, click that little button over there. And leave a like in the video and comment if you are stuck with anything. And I forgot to run this as, as an administrator. So I need to run this as an administrator. So I will be right back. Right, I'm back. There we have it going again. This time I actually opened this as an administrator, which can often be a problem if you don't. So be sure to open your console as an administrator when you go through that. Another thing I want to mention is we're going to be using a lot of different cool things that you haven't seen before in our previous videos. So one of the big things is that modal component that we showed off in the demonstration of the application, as well as we, we happen to show off the something that wasn't really showed off, but I want to set this application up so that it can be expanded upon later on, especially if you guys want to edit this and make it even better. I'm going to make use of react navigation, which is quite a cool thing. Um, we're going to use a stack navigator for that, but I will explain that in the next video. Speaking about the next video, the next video is actually going to be just me showing you that you can use GitHub to get each section of this video. So if you want to skip to like the fifth video or something, you can go to GitHub and start from the fifth video if you have any issues. So I'm going to be explaining how to set that up in the next video. And another thing is I've actually put this application up on Google Play. So if you want to check it out, literally just go search Capo Keys. I think I mentioned it in one of my previous slides here, like put up some text and stuff. But be sure to check that out and leave a nice review if you'd like to. That would be much appreciated. And anyway, guys, before I ramble on too long, I think I'm going to close the video here. So as usual, please leave a like if you've enjoyed and leave some comments because that really helps a lot. I know what to do if you leave comments and uh, be sure to definitely subscribe if you want more content. You can also find me on Twitter at Barry M. Doyle. Or join my Facebook page, just type in facebook.com slash Barry Michael Doyle as well and you'll get me there. Those are nice places to get updates on how things are going with my progress. If anything happens, like I get hit by a bus or something, you can find out there. Anyway guys, ciao, see you in the next video.